Theoretical learning is what the knowledge is about and the practical application is how the knowledge learned needs to be implemented. Continue to watch till end to make it easy to apply in practice. Before going to the topic, if you didn't subscribe to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get the uploaded videos immediately. As a nurse, it is important to handle the intravenous line almost every day. In this video, we are going to see in detail about the Visual Infusion Phlebitis Scale which helps you to find IV line is healthy and can be continued with medication fluids or needs to be discontinued. To give a brief introduction about WIP score, it was recommended by Royal College of Nursing UK in 2006 by Gallant and Charles for monitoring infusion sites that determines the appropriate discontinuation of peripheral IV catheters. Why? WIP score is important to know. The phlebitis, which is inflammation of vein near the surface of skin, occurs either mechanically or chemically. Most occurs through chemical in origin because of concentrated drugs and fluid and minimal through mechanical because of patient movement and accidental force applied to the site. Through the WIP score, we can identify the phlebitis at earliest stage so that it promotes patient safety and comfort. Before going to the scoring, you must know to recognize the symptoms of phlebitis. The symptoms of phlebitis are pain along the path of cannula, second, redness around the site, third, swelling, fourth, palpable venous cord, and the fifth is pyraxia. So these are the symptoms of Wibsco. Now let's see in detail. The image illustrates the person with IV line which has redness, swelling and palpable venous cord that are absorbed by vision. The other symptoms, pain needs to be confirmed with patient verbalization and pyraxia needs to be found through temperature monitoring. Now let's see in detail about the WIP score and its 5 stages. If you find no symptoms of phlebitis as mentioned in previous slide and the IV site appears healthy then your score is 0. There are no symptoms of phlebitis and you need to observe cannula at every shift. If you any one of the symptoms the patient either complains pain or you find redness near IV site then your WIP score is 1. There is possible signs of phlebitis and hence you need to monitor the cannula site frequently. Then the next is if you find any two symptoms such as pain, redness or swelling and your score is 2. The early stage of phlebitis and definitely you need to recite the cannula. The next stage is if the patient have all the three symptoms such as pain, redness and swelling around the IV site then your score is 3 and this is a medium stage of phlebitis therefore you need to recite cannula and consider treatment. The next stage is if the patient experiences pain, redness, swelling and you find the palpable venous cord then the score is 4. It is an advanced stage of phlebitis and start of thrombophlebitis. So you need to recite cannula and consider treatment. The last fifth stage is if all the five symptoms are evident and extensive then your score is 5. It is advanced stage of thrombophlebitis. Definitely you need to recite cannula and initiate treatment. The treatment can be considered and initiated are informing medical team, applying ice packs, limb elevation, analgesics, antipyretics and anticoagulant gel such as thrombophobe. The treatment differs according to the symptoms and severity. So before the continuing with the treatment, kindly consider about the patient condition. Now let's see about the ways to prevent the phlebitis. The first one is choosing the appropriate cannula size and site 
Follow aseptic technique while infusing at all times. Secure the cannula site with transparent dressing. Flush the cannula often or before medication administration. Proper dilution of medication as per the policy and label cannula with date and time to follow the number of days used. To prevent the phlebitis, cannula size is important. From the illustration, you can find that as the cannula gauge increases, the needle size decreases. The selection of cannula size must be according to the patient usage. The 14 and 16 gauge are larger in size and hence it is used for rapid fluid replacement, blood transfusion, especially for patients with shock, undergoing major surgery and trauma patient. The flow rate can be infused at 240 to 180 ml per minute. The 18 gauge is commonly used for adult patients that can be used for multiple drug administration, even antibiotics can be given in 18 gauge where the flow rate is 90 ml per minute. The 20 gauge is ideally used for IV infusion and medication of very low concentration. The 20 gauge and 22 gauge are used for adult patients such as for geriatrics, oncology, dehydrated patient and sometimes 22 gauge is used for pediatric patient where flow rate can be used at minimum. Fluid race, uh, replacement can be done only at maintenance level and rapid fluid replacement is difficult. The 24 gauge which is the least needle size is used for neonatal where the flow rate is 20 ml per minute. Hope that you have gained knowledge on whip score, different cannula size and its appropriate selection to use. If you have any queries or doubts, contact us through nursesnookcorner at gmail.com. If you have any suggestion, give in the comment box. Thank you for watching till end. Once again, if you didn't subscribe the channel, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get your uploaded videos immediately. Thank you once again.